Yeah, today we are starting with the problems on the compression member. The basics we start with the problems if a particular element is given, say a particular member is given, say ISMB 400, ISJB, JB we want to use, ISHB, ISWB. So those sections, how much, what is the capacity of the member in compression those problems we will do this is one type of problem where we are going to find the compressive strength of the element the next type of problems giving the force find you have to design you have to select the member and whether you have to check it whether it suits or not so in these two types first we do the first type of problems where a member is given you have to find out the capacity of the compressive strength of the member okay we'll start with with the beginning with a single angle okay <coughs> we'll take down this problem a single angle A single angle discontinuous discontinuous member a discontinuous start it may be ISA he has given the element 130 into 130 that are equal like into 10 mm with single bolted connection single bolted connection is 2.5 meters long okay calculate the safe load calculate the safe load carrying capacity carrying capacity of the section so here the section is given you have to find out the safe load carrying capacity so what is the strength of the element in the compression okay uh, if it is connected by connected by one bolt at each end see angle is connected with one bolt at each end say I'll draw the figure So this is the angle okay at each end if it is connected by a single bolt for the other member so this is the other member maybe this is the other member okay so if it is connected single angle connected with the single bolt we have a different formulas if a single angle connected with the two bolts we have a formula in <coughs> if you take the page number page number 48 of class 7.5.1.2 okay if you open this loaded through one leg the heading is loaded through one leg i'll read out what is there in that the flexural torsional buckling strength of a single angle loaded in compression through one of its leg may be evaluated using equivalent slenderness ratio delta e sorry lambda e as given below they have given the formula for lambda e that is equivalent slenderness ratio will be 
square root of k1 plus k2 lambda vb square plus k3 lambda phi square this is the formula you can see in the page number 48 where k1 k2 k3 where k1 k2 k3 constants depend upon the end conditions so depend upon the end conditions the k1 k2 k3 value changes okay so here in table 12 in the same page page number 48 in table 12 they have given constant k1 k2 k3 okay serial number number of bolts at each end connection you can see okay gusset or connecting member fixity what fixity have hinged fixed hinged fixed like that and k1 k2 k3 values are shown in the table okay so here what is k1 k2 k3 will come to know then what is this lambda vv slenderness ratio vv is given by l by r vv divided by epsilon square root pi square e divided by 250 this is the formula okay then what is this lambda phi that is also given in the code book it is b1 plus b2 this is the length of the legs of the single angle here it is both are equal because it is a equal length angle 130 to 130 so we have the formula is b1 b2 divided by 2t t is the thickness of the angle and epsilon root pi square e divided by 250 these are the formulas where l equal it is given in the code book is 800 center to center length of the supporting member so center to center length of the supporting member rvv is the radius of gyration about the minor axis that is available in the sp6 steel tables b1 b2 is the width of two legs of the angle and t is the thickness of the leg and epsilon is the yield stress ratio that is nothing but 250 by fy it is given under root okay so this is the data given in the code book now we will start finding the okay now first we calculate i'll draw the given angle the given angle is 130 this side also it is 130 and this thickness is 10 okay now this is isa 130 into 130 into 10 that is the given member and it is single bolt connected okay that is the data given and they have given fy as 250 newton per mm square okay now referring to the table referring to the table 12 referring to the table 12 of the is 800 okay k1 see here you have in table 12 serial number number of bolt at each end ours is 1 so second thing i have to take okay 1 okay and it is 
discontinuous means you have to take the hinged values k1 equal to 1.25 k2 equal to 0 0.5 k3 equal to 60 it is given in the table 12 of page number 48 okay and now first i will calculate lambda vv is l by r vv isn't it divided by epsilon root pi square e divided by 250 so from sp6 6, 6 r vv equal to 2.54 centimeters you can see in the steel tables rsp6 okay so page number 10 and 11 if you go to page 10 and 11 the details of the section c in 10 uh, 130 into 130 the thickness is you have 8 10 12 and 15 so given is 10 so the second one then uh, you want r v v go to next page 11 see 11 details you have r v v is 2.54 centimeters okay 2.54 centimeters in millimeter it is 25.4 mm okay now substitute in the formula lambda vvl l is the length of the member is 2500 that is 2.5 meters divided by r vv r vv is radius of direction in v direction okay 25.4 divided by epsilon epsilon if you calculate i told you what here it is in the formula they have given how to calculate epsilon epsilon is 250 by 250 see epsilon is given in the code book as 250 by fy to the power 0.5 that is 250 divided by 250 into 0.5 is this is nothing but one so epsilon is 1 then root of pi square into e e you can take 2 into 10 raised to 5 angst modulus of this steel we take 2 or 2.1 newton per mm square so i have taken 2 into 10 raised to 5 newton per mm square divided by 250 if you do the calculation this comes to 1.107 the next thing you have to calculate lambda phi lambda phi is given as b1 plus b2 it's there in the code book b1 plus b2 divided by 2t the whole thing divided by same epsilon pi square e by fy that is 250 sorry not fy 250 so substitute here 130 plus 130 divided by 2 into thickness of the angle is 10 divided by 1 into square root of pi square into 2 into 10 raised to 5 divided by 250 the lambda of 5 value will get it as 0 0.14 6 okay 0 0.146 okay now we get lambda vv lambda phi okay to find the effective so we can calculate the effective lambda e lambda e effective uh, slenderness ratio 
is the square root of k1 k1 is 1.25 plus k2 k2 is 0 0.5 into then we have that is lambda v b 1.107 square i am substituting in the formula plus 60 into lambda that is k3 is 60 into lambda 5 that is 0 0.146 square under root okay so this you will get it as 1.772 effective lambda slenderness ratio then phi is given by 0.5 into 1 plus okay 1 plus alpha into effective lambda or simply lambda we can put minus 0.2 into lambda square if i substitute that point 0.5 1 plus alpha we'll get it from the table 7 okay is 0.49 okay and then lambda is how much 1.7 Seven two minus point two into one point seven seven two square. We get five value as two point four five five. And we know the FCD in the page thirty four. If we take the page thirty four, they have given how to calculate the design stress, design compressive stress. So in page 34, it is given in 7 point <coughs> number 34, class number 7.1.2.1, FCD, that is design compressive stress FCD of axial loaded compression member calculated using formula FCD equal to FY divided by RMO divided by phi plus phi square minus lambda square to the power 0 0.5 this should be equal to xm5 by 2 m o partial safety factor that is should be less than and equal to lead stress divided by factor partial factor of safety and see in the page number 34 the phi equation is given lambda equation is given okay how to calculate so we will put all we know the, all the values fy is given 250 divided by the mo is taken as one, partial safety factor is taken as 1.1 so i'll substitute 1.1 divided by Phi already I have calculated 2.455 plus 2.455 square minus 1.772 square to the power 0.5. I have substituted all the values. So FCD equal to 54.71 Newton per mm square. Then we know PD equal to stress equal to what's the formula load divided by area now i require the load load is nothing but stress into area so stress we have calculated and area so where we get the area again from sp6 you get the area of the given single angle okay this is uh, area is referring to sp6 it is 2506 okay so i'll substitute 54.71 into 2406 
I'll divide by 1000 so that I'll get the answer in the kilonewtons. Rather than newtons, I'll get the answer in the kilonewtons. That is 137 kilonewton. So this is the method of doing single angle connected with the single bolt. How to do? Using table 12. Okay. Then and using class number 7.1.2.1 we have found out the FCD once you find the FCD multiply with the area you will get the, the safe loading carrying capacity design load carrying capacity of the member so this should be the actual load should be less than what is the design load why why means if it crosses more than the design load it fails isn't it so the load should be less than the design load that is pd value okay now we will move to the other problem where <coughs> the angle is connected by more than one rivet sorry one bolt now we will go to the second problem the same above the above problem if single angle if single angle discontinuous discontinuous start is connected is connected with two bolts with two bolts at each end at each end connections determine the safe load carrying capacity capacity of the section now this is the second problem for the same angle single angle 130 to 130 to 10 now we are connecting with the two bolts so how to do now again we go back to the table 12 okay and get the values of k1 k2 k3 isn't it yeah go to the table 12 now it is a class number 7.5.1.2 okay so k1 is 0 0.2 okay then k2 equal to 10 start we have given and this is a fixed condition okay so for fixed condition it is k1 is 0 0.2 and k2 is 0 0.35 and k3 is 20 these are the values from the table okay now lambda vv equal to l by r vv divided by epsilon root of pi is pi square e divided by 250 so here already we have calculated this in the last problem 1.107 then lambda of phi is given as b1 plus b2 divided by 
2t divided by same epsilon y square e by 250. So the lambda phi value already we have calculated in the last problem 0 0.146 we got that then lambda e using the k1 k2 k3 for values are different so we have to calculate the lambda e using this a square root of k1 is 0.2 plus k2 is 0.35 into lambda vv 1.107 square plus k3 into lambda phi square so k3 is 20 lambda phi is 0 0.146 square so you will get 1.102 now before calculating the fcd i need phi value phi value using formula 0.5 bracket begin 1 plus alpha lambda minus 0.2 plus lambda square okay this is 0.5 1 plus lambda is 0.49 then uh, sorry alpha is 0 0.49 lambda is 0 0.012 uh, minus 0 0.2 bracket close uh, again it is 1.012 square close the bracket it is not visible there I will write here 1.2012 square bracket close now you get a phi value as 1.211 now calculate the fcd then calculate the pd value we will calculate the fcd okay The F C D is given as small if it is. It is given as F Y by dou M0 that is partial safety factor divided by phi plus phi square plus lambda square to the power 0.5. If you substitute all the things 250 divided by 1.1 divided by or the lambda value 1.211 uh, plus bracket begin 1.211 square plus minus minus lambda e that is lambda or lambda e both are same 0 1.012 square to the power 0.5 you get this value as 137.45 then pd equal to 137.45 into 2506 is the area okay pd is fcd into area cross this is the formula so divided by 1000 to get in kilonewton 344.4 kilonewton okay see when you put a single rivet last problem if you see it is a 137 same angle if i put a one rivet the compressive strength we got it as 137 if i put two rivets and it is a fixed see the difference there it is a hinged here it is a fixed so fixed how much it takes the load 344.4 kilonewtons so the fixed member will take the more load than the hinged or a pinned member that's what we seen in the previous slides okay
so here the design strength is 344 0.4 okay now we will move to the other problems a third problem now we will take a i section okay for a given i section how to find its okay, load carrying capacity so take down the problem determine I'll read out, determine the design strength, determine the design strength of design strength of compression member. ISHB ISHB 300 at 58.8 kg per meter okay you are familiar with this designation ISJB ISMB ISWB ISHB isn't it what are the it represents the 300 represents the depth of the member and 58.8 kg per meter that is the weight of the member available in the market. So this is the way we represent the I section depends upon the their capacity we classify into JB, MB, HB, WB so on. Now effective length of the column he has directly given the effective length if effective length is not given depends upon the end conditions you have to calculate the effective length of the column so effective length equal to effective length of column is 3 meters then yield stress is given yield stress equal to is 250 MPa. So this is the given data. So what are the given things? I'll write down. ISHP is given 300 at 58.8. This is the number he has given and you should know what is the design compressive strength. To calculate then uh, <coughs> he has given the L effective is 3 meters that is 3000 in millimeters then FY is 250 Newton per hour. this is the given and how to calculate the design strength now you consider sp6 okay page number four there you get the detail of ishb 300 at 58.8 you have two ishb 300 depends upon the weight we can classify that so you have to see for the 58.8 which you are familiar okay you need this width of the flange thickness of the flange thickness of the web and height of the member height of the member we know 300 okay referring to the sp6 it is 250 mm this is 10.6 mm this is 7.6 mm So, referring page th number 44, table 10. Why we are referring this? If you open that, 
page 44 see here the first one in table 10 it is given rolled eye section okay then second welded eye section then you have third hollow sections you have circular square and rectangle next is you have a welded box box section okay then below that you have channel angle t and solid sections the figures are also there you can see those figures channel l t you can show means you can show like this channel l t solid sections okay this comes under class c any type it comes under class c and built up member say built up built up section means combination of two elements that is comes under buckling class c why we refer this table is to find the buckling class i told you we have four types of classes a b c d buckling classes you have to find under which class your given element comes okay so we have you have first one i which is a roll die section second welded eye section hollow sections welded box sections channel angle t and solid sections and built up number so he, this we have taken the i section so i have to refer the table 10 okay so here you have to find h by br ratio bf that is width of flange h is height to width of flange and thickness of flange depends upon that the buckling about axis zz and yy axis zz is nothing but axis xx in our case okay so we have to find out first thing is h divided by bf and what is your tf okay then we can decide on which axis what buckling takes place what class of the buckling takes place in zz axis in yy axis so first i'll calculate h by bf that is 300 divided by 250 nothing but 1.2 then our tf thickness of the flange is 10.6 mm so come to this table table 10 okay and page number 44 see here it is given in first case h by bf greater than 1.2 ours is not greater ours is equal so come to the next block of in the table h by br less than or equal to 1.2 so, so i have to consider this and tf is greater than 100 mm okay so our tf is not greater than 100 mm okay oh, our c is less than equal to 100 mm now what is my zz axis buckling so 40 less than equal to 40 mm less than tr and less than and equal to 100 mm so it comes to zz axis is classification is buckling class is b and y y axis buckling class is c okay this is the data we got from the table 10 now referring first i will consider the zz axis referring table 
नाइन बी और पेज नंबर फोर्टी वन ऑफ आई एस एट हंड्रेड सो इफ यू टेक द पेज नंबर फोर्टी वन यू हैव टेबल्स फ्रॉम द बकलिंग क्लास टेबल्स फ्रॉम फोर्टी In forty, you have nine A, which comes for the buckling class A. Nine B, which comes for the buckling class B. You take this table. See, at the left end, you have slenderness ratio K L by R, and uh, the horizontally you have yield stress starting from two hundred, two ten, two twenty, two thirty, four, two forty, two fifty, two sixty, till it is five forty. Now, and the yield slenderness ratio starting from ten, twenty, thirty, forty, increase by ten. You have up to two fifty. Okay, so we'll calculate first our slenderness ratio to refer the table K L by R. So this being hint L equal to L effective, so it is three thousand. Divided by one twenty nine point five. Where we got this one twenty nine point five is again SP six U radius of gyration at Z Z axis is nothing but R X X. That is one twenty nine point five mm. You get from the steel tables. Now. Then taking the table nine B, this is what's the value twenty three point one six six. So K L by R, then you have F C D values for yield strength of two fifty for twenty. Check the table for twenty to two fifty. It is two twenty five, and for thirty it is. Two one six. I have to calculate for twenty three point one six six. What is the value? So interpolate it and get the value of FCD. FCD equal to two twenty two point one one. You get when you interpolate and take the values. So this is one along the z-axis. This is the allowable. Compressive stress. We have to find both the axes here. Z to Z axis also it is there. Y Y axis it is also there. Now we find what is our F C D in Y Y axis. We we'll calculate the F C D value. The F C D value along Y Y axis. So <clears throat> consider Y Y axis. The buckling class is. Buckling class is C. So I have to refer. Sorry. Y Y axis. The buckling class is C. Now, <clears throat> referring table. Referring table nine C, page number forty two of IS eight hundred. If you go to the page number forty two of IS eight hundred, there you will get the buckling class C and calculate the K L by R Y Y. So get the R Y Y value from the S P six. That is fifty four point one millimeter. It is five point four. If you convert into millimeter, it is fifty point four. Now it is three thousand divided by fifty four point one. It is fifty five point four five. Now come to the table. What is the K L by R Y Y to respective F C D. 
for 50 it is 183 for 60 it is 168 i am interested in 55.45 what is the value if you calculate that you will get fcd as 174.82 newton per inch so one we got 174 and the previous n1 was 222.1 so least you have to take least of about fcd equal to 174.82 newton per mm square therefore the design compressive strength the design compressive strength equal to of column I did, equal to PD equal to AG into FCD again how you will get area of grass again from SP6 this value is 7485 mm square. So PD equal to 7485 into 174.82. We'll get PD as 1308.5 kilo newton. So this is the allowable design compressive strength. Okay. Then divide by the factor of safety, you will get the allowable one. That's what it is. Now, <coughs> that we call it as a, again, uh, safe load, yes, asked. I'll do the, you can call safe load. Sometimes it is called service load. Sometimes it is called working load. Both are, three things are same. Is nothing but your PD divided by factor of safety. If I take factor of safety 1.5, I'll get 872.35 kilo newtons is the safe load. Of the number. This is one method. There is one more method prescribed in the IS 456. Okay, using formulas. We have done this by using curves, isn't it? A, B, C, D, the curves we have used, and those curves depends upon the class of buckling. The tables are made 9A, 9B, 9C, 9D. Referring that we got the values and calculated the FCD value, interpolating it. We got the value, then we have got the PD value. Now, without using the curves, using the formulas, that is second method. Second method. Using formulas. Okay. Now basic equation is PD equal to AG into FCD. Okay. So referring page number 34 of IS 800. They have given how to calculate the formula for FCD is the same formula where we have used for the single angle or double angle rivet what formula that is fi into partial safety factor divided by phi plus phi square minus lambda square to the power 0.5 equal to stress reduction factor into fi into partial safety divided by partial safety factor less than or equal to Fy again to M2. Now, 
first I calculate phi value. Phi value is given as 0 0.5. The formula you can see in the code book. 1 plus alpha into lambda minus 0.2 plus lambda square. How to calculate lambda again? Is the root of Fy by Fcc. That is root of Fy KL by R whole square divided by square E. Okay. Fcc is nothing but Euler buckling stress. It is called Euler buckling stress equal to pi square E divided by KL by R whole square. So that we have substituted here and got this right side formula. Okay. Now alpha referring table 7 page number page number 35 ok now <coughs> yeah calculate the value First we calculate the buckling class. Which class it comes? So buckling class. Like what? We know that is H by D F point one point two less than equal to one point two. Then D F df is over 6.10.6 less than or equal to 100 ml. So we know already it is zz axis you have class B in yy axis you have class C. to calculate the buckling class I am rewriting it buckling class h by dt equal to 1.2 less than and equal to 1.2 then df equal to 10.6 less than and equal to 100 mm so zz class ZZ axis comes with class B buckling and YY axis it comes under class C buckling. Okay. Now for ZZ axis I calculate. For ZZ axis first thing I will calculate the slenderness ratio KL by R. Okay, already we have calculated that comes to 23.166. Alpha is 0.34 here for class B. Then now calculate the lambda Z equal to square root of the formula here we have a formula fy kl by r whole square divided by pi square e i'll put in that formula that is 250 into kl by r KL by R is 23.166 whole square divided by pi square into 2 into 10 raised to pi whole thing under the root. 
so this phi z lambda z we got 0 0.26 next phi z what is the formula 0.5 into 1 plus 1 plus alpha lambda minus 0.2 plus lambda square so 0 0.5 1 plus alpha is 0 0.34 for B class then lambda again uh, 0.26 minus 0 0.2 bracket close plus 0 0.26 square you will get phi 2 as 0 0.544 now fc yeah. calculation of fcd fcd equal to f by partial safety factor divided by phi plus phi square minus lambda square to the power 0.5 so i'll substitute all the values 250 divided by 1.1 divided by phi is 0.544 plus 0.544 square minus 0.26 square what to the power 0.5 you will get you will get the value as 232.23 newton per mm square so this is the fcd value when you consider <coughs> along the z axis now for y y axis the buckling class is the buckling class is c isn't it again i will calculate the kl by rho this is r y y i have to take i will get 55.45 then alpha as 0.49 then lambda y equal to substitute in the formula that is 250 into 55.45 square divided by pi square into e e is 2 into 10 raised to 5 you will get this as 0 0.624 now I have to find the phi y value. If you take phi of y axis equal to 0.5 into 1 plus 0 0.34 that is alpha into lambda y that is 0 0.624 minus 0 0.2 plus lambda square 0 0.624 square so you get phi y as 0.766 now calculate fcd fcd equal to fy 250 divided by factor of safety 1.1 then divided by 0 0.765 phi plus phi square 0 0.766 square minus lambda square that is 0 0.624 square to the power 0 0.5 you will get 175.06 newton per mm square so i have two values 232 and 174 so this value I have to consider as the least. The least value has to be considered. So I consider the least value Fd as 
175.06 newton per mm square our previous case f cd value our previous case it is um, 174.82 the slight difference between using curves and using the formulas okay so using curves this is the value using formula this is the value you will get almost approximately same value of same value of pd isn't it 175.06 174.82 so it is so which one you give? instead of remembering so many formula just refer to the table and get fcd you need not remember all the phi formula lambda formula all those things can be avoided so you can prefer the first method of the calculating the safe load so here we have done with the i section so three problems we have done today one is the single angle with connected with the single rivet and it is a hinged then the same angle single angle it is fixed and two rivets how much strong it is you got more than the double value okay with two rivets using table 12 that we have used and using the a formulas in the <clears throat> class class numbers 7.5.1.2 and using table 12 we have designed the single riveted angle stud and two single bolted and two bolted angle we have calculated now next we have done with the i section i section which is a uh, pinned one effective length he has given we don't know what is pinned or hinged directly has given the effective length then we have used two methods one using the curves the other one using the formulas okay the in the both the cases you have to take the least value along this z or y axis that decides the buckling class decides by the table 10 so both the z axis and y axis we have calculated the least fcd we have taken and multiplied with the area cross-sectional area of the given member we get the design strength of the member in second case we have used the formulas okay so approximately the same value you will get whether you use by first method or second method but the first one is more comfortable method of calculating the value of compressive strength we'll stop here next class we'll do again the further problems